Hello and welcome to Comfort and Joy on this second Advent Sunday. I hope you're well wherever you are in the world today. Our carol today is While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks by Night. The last verse of the carol says, All glory be to God on high, and to the earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. It wouldn't have been Christmas without the angels. In fact, it couldn't have been. Lacking the reassurance from the angel of the Lord, Joseph, the carpenter of Nazareth, would probably have divorced Mary quietly, and she would never have made it to Bethlehem. Likewise, after Jesus' birth, Joseph would have known neither to flee to Egypt nor to return to Israel, had it not been for the angel's instructions in his dreams. On the other side of the Holy Family, the angel of the Lord, who identifies himself as Gabriel in Luke's Gospel, appears to both Zechariah, Jesus' uncle, and to his mother Mary, giving each of them essential information about the babies to be born. And the repeated and surely much needed encouragement, do not be afraid. On the night of Jesus' birth, the angel of the Lord reappears in the Christmas story, this time to shepherds out in the field near the village of Bethlehem. This is the scene retold in paraphrase by the 18th century English carol, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks. The author of the carol, poet laureate Nahum Tate, kept quite closely to the text of Luke chapter 2, but he did make a number of interesting additions or tweaks. First, he calls the angel of the Lord the seraph. Seraphim, that's the plural of seraph, appear in the Old Testament as six-winged heavenly messengers who worship in the presence of God. Their name means burning ones. Luke doesn't tell us that the Christmas angel was a seraph, but perhaps the biblical description of the glory of the Lord which shone around the shepherds, filling them with fear, prompted the association for the carol writer. Next, the carol describes a shining throng of angels who praised God in joyful song. Luke, on the other hand, describes a multitude of the heavenly host, literally a throng of heaven's army. And interestingly, Luke's heavenly army don't actually sing, despite what almost everyone imagines. Check your Bible if you don't believe me. Luke simply tells us that they said their verse of praise. To those of us who've been brought up on Christmas images of angels singing, it may come as something of a disappointment to discover that the angelic army was possibly made up of shouting soldiers rather than sweet-voiced singers. Indeed, there are a number of hints in the Bible that angels are martial figures rather than musical ones. Not least of these is the account in Joshua 5 of Joshua's encounter with the commander of the army of the Lord, who is standing before Joshua with his drawn sword in his hand. I think this is probably the image we should have of the angel who visited the shepherds outside Bethlehem on the night Jesus was born, standing at the head of his heavenly task force. Surely a message from such a troop is worth attending to. In the carol, their words are expressed like this. All glory be to God on high, and to the earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. This is an expansion of the King James Version of Luke 2.14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Put like this, it seems quite an easy idea to grasp. With the birth of Christ the Lord, which is good news, a great joy for all the people, God gets all the glory in heaven and he gives peace and goodwill to people on earth. However, the ESV translation, a more modern one, is a bit different. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Why the difference? Well, it all stems from the presence or absence of a single Greek letter at the end of the verse in different manuscripts of Luke's Gospel. Modern scholars are in general agreement that the ESV probably reflects the original that Luke wrote. But what does it mean? Well, it can't mean that God, in Jesus, gives his peace to those who, who please him as some kind of tit for tat. None of us in ourselves can please God. Left to our own devices, we're helpless slaves of sin. That's why we need Jesus as our rescuer. Rather, the angel's message means that with the birth of the Saviour, God's peace is poured out on those whom he's chosen in accordance with his good pleasure. This includes all the people, whether from within ethnic Israel or from among the nations, who will believe in Jesus for salvation. The Christmas message of God's never-ceasing peace is therefore also for us if our trust is in God's Messiah. 
glory to God in the highest.